Welcome to Play to Win, where we play to win. Well, not today. Today we're kind of talking about how to win with Brawlin and Shabraz. Brawlin and Shabraz Curious Combo is a deck of mine that I've played before. It's also a deck of other people's. I didn't make the deck. I mean, there are other people that worked on a similar deck at a similar time. But today we're doing a deck tech of Brawlin and Shabraz Curious Combo. There are a few different ways to build Brawlin and Shabraz in CDH. In fact, if you go to CDH decklist database, you'll find four different deck lists on there already. This isn't any of those. This is my personal list. For the most part, all of these decks are pretty similar. The main strategy is the same. Get a Brawlin out and put a Curiosity onto it. But each of these decks functions a little bit differently. And today I'm gonna to be talking about specifically my version of the build. Most of the Brawlin and Shabraz lists I see are very staxy, focusing on Blood Moon effects and the like to slow down the game and win in the long game. I have went the opposite direction of that. I tried that out, it didn't feel comfortable for me. That's not saying that it's wrong. Blood Moon's a very powerful card and Stax effects are very powerful. I had more success and more fun piloting this deck when I slanted it a little bit more proactive. Before we get into it, let's actually read what Brawlin and Shabraz does. First, we have Brawlin Sky Shark Rider, a four mana 3-3 three, three that partners with Shabraz the Sky Shark. Brawlin's main ability and the main purpose of this deck is the line, whenever you discard a card, put a plus one plus one counter on Brawlin Sky Shark Rider and it deals one damage to each opponent. That each opponent is very key. When there's a curiosity on Brawlin and you discard a card, you're dealing a damage to each opponent, which is three cards that you'll get to draw with the curiosity. That snowballs pretty quickly in a deck that's looking to discard cards at a cheap rate. Shabraz the Sky Shark is the partner to Brawlin. Although it seems that Shabraz is not gonna do anything, in actuality, Shabraz turns into a pretty big beat stick pretty quickly. Shabraz has nothing really to do with the combo, but helps you get out of sticky situations if your life total has been put under too much pressure and allows you to get out of stacks matchups simply by knocking out a player with your giant flying shark. The fact that many of your combo pieces are redundant and many of your tutor pieces to find them are also redundant allows you to not necessarily protect a win regularly, but to consistently combo off. What I mean by this is you're not gonna present a win with protection on turn three, but you will present a win on turn three, turn four, turn five, and for the rest of the game. That's a little bit of an exaggeration, but that's what you're trying to do with Brawl and Shabazz. You're looking to just do your combo again. Let's go over the cards in the deck by card type. First, we'll go with Planeswalkers, Narset Parter of Veils. This one's not an include in every Brawlin deck or every blue CEDH deck, but in this one specifically, we're looking to cast Wheel of Fortune and the like a lot. We're using Narset in combination with Wheel Effects to empty our opponent's hands very quickly. The deck has a lot of these one-two punches that don't necessarily win you the game, but handicap your opponents so heinously that you'll be able to pull ahead. For creatures in the deck, we have 12 of them. And the most important ones are Tireless Tribe and Ghostly Pilferer. Ghostly Pilferer being a new addition actually has a lot of text that's all very relevant in this deck. But the main one is its ability to discard a card for free, no cost. Tireless Tribe as well. Although with the Curiosity effect on Brawlin, theoretically you can win the game if you were to go to discard with eight cards in your hand. This would create a loop allowing you to redraw during your cleanup every time. But it's surprisingly hard to get to eight cards and hands reliably. So having creatures like Tireless Tribe and Ghostly Pillifer allow you to control that discard. Next we'll talk about Tandem Lookout, which acts as the third copy of Curiosity in this deck. Although slightly worse, this one isn't a May. So you are forced to draw those cards, which is why going to discard with eight cards can be a little risky with Tandem Lookout. This one works much better if you have a discard outlet on table. Next up, we have Dockside Extortionist as an auto include for basically the best ramp you can find in red. Gilded Drake, another auto include as one of the best removal spells you can find in the format. Grand Abolisher as an efficient way to protect our combo. Jace Friend's Prodigy as a nice way to discard cards when necessary and buy back some spells if need be. Glenhorn Buccaneer acts as a second combo piece with the Curiosity effects. Imperial Recruiter, Recruiter of the Guard, and Ranger Captain of Eos help you tutor for necessary creatures to help combo off or protect your combo. Ranger Captain of Eos specifically only getting Tireless Tribe in the deck and a third way to silence our opponent when we're looking to go off. And Alms Collector, which helps you break parity with the Wheel of Fortune effects. Next, we'll go over some of the sorceries in the deck. First up, we have Careful Study and Faithless Looting, two cheap ways to start discarding cards. Gamble that acts as a tutor and a combo enabler if we're at that state with Curiosity and Brawlin. Gitaxian Pro, Ponder, and Preordain help filter our draws and make sure we hit our land drops. Open the Armory Tutors for for curiosity and ideal tutor can either tutor for a curiosity effect 
an Underworld Breach to buy a Curiosity Effect back, or a Smothering Tithe or Rhystic Study just to gain value. Savine's Reclamation helps you buy back your Curiosity Effects, and also really helps in your intuition pile when looking for Underworld Breach or a Curiosity Effects. I chose Sweltering Suns in the slot that normally would find Pyroclasm, the main reason for this is 3 damage to get rid of Dranith Magistrate is very relevant, and being able to cycle it, discarding a card, is actually also kind of relevant. And then we have Time Twister, Wheel of Fortune, and Windfall as the powerful wheel effects in the deck to help us refuel our hands or cripple our opponents. Our instant package is pretty standard with Pact of Negation, Dispel, Flusterstorm, Mental Misstep, Red Elemental Blast, Swan Song, Dovin's Veto, Mana Drain, Deflecting Swat, Fierce Guardianship, and Force of Will acting as protection. We also have Brainstorm, of course, as well as Chain of Vapor, Silence, Swords to Plowshares, and Cyclonic Rift to help deal with our opponents, and Enlightened Tutor, Mystical Tutor, and Intuition to help find what we need. The Intuition piles in this deck can be pretty interesting and kind of complex. The main one we're looking for is any one of the three Curiosity effects. That one's pretty nice, as well as being able to get Savine's Reclamation, Underworld Breach, and Lion's Eye Diamond, which is quite the potent combination of cards. For artifacts, we have a slew of standard ones, including Chrome Mox, Lotus Petal, Mox Diamond, Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Fell War Stone, Grim Monolith, Is It Signet, and Talisman of Creativity and Progress, as well as Lion's Eye Diamond being very good with Underworld Breach and pretty good with Wheel Effects. And we're also playing Sensei's Divining Top to help with our draws, as well as Cursed Totem to slightly slow down our opponents if we can. And for enchantments, the most important part of this deck, Curiosity. The main focus of the deck is landing a Curiosity on a Brawlin. Not only will this help you start drawing more cards, but will quickly lead to a win. Mystic Remora and Rhystic Study will help you fill up your hand. Aphidia and I acts as a second Curiosity with Flash, which is surprisingly helpful. Copy Artifact is often a second Soul Ring. Smothering Tithe will give you buckets of advantage with Wheel Effects, and Underworld Breach helps not only you buy things back, but also acts as a combo enabler. Our land count is a little high in this deck at 31, but the main reason for that is we're running Bazaar of Baghdad, which doesn't actually produce mana, so it really doesn't count. Basically, it's uncounterable discard, which is kind of nice in this deck. I have found it to be a nice include. Most of the primers that you'll see for Brawlin and Shabazz decks will tell you to go slow, and normally they'd be right that is the case. With this version of the deck, I found that that's often not the case. You may not always be able to protect your combo, but between Savine's Reclamation, Underworld Breach, and several copies of your Curiosity Effect, you'll be able to present wins turn after turn. If your opponents manage to deal with all of these win conditions, you're often left with a giant flying shark that can do some real damage to players who are using their life as a resource and can help act as stacks removal by acting as player removal. I think the Brawlin and Shabraz deck is really fun to play. You can go a couple different ways and really specify it to your meta. If your meta is full of tiny, tiny creatures, Pyroclasm is the way to go. Greedy four color decks, Blood Moon is the way to go. If you wanna be the deck that's presenting win turn after turn, maybe this version's the way to go. And I also wanna to touch on a few quick honorable mentions that you may be asking yourself, wait a minute, why isn't that card in the deck? First, let's go over Tyranith Magistrate and Aven Mind Sensor while we're at it. Both of these cards are fantastic, specifically Dranith Magistrate. The cards are very good at slowing down the game, but this version of the deck isn't really interested in doing that. For me, I often found that getting my Dranith Magistrate Gilded Drake and now I can't play my Brawlin was just too much of a risk for considering playing the card in the deck that all it really did was slow down one or two players for a turn or two, but didn't help me progress my board to finding a win. And in this deck, I'm trying to find the win quickly. Burning Inquiry and Firestorm are also two that are very interesting in this deck. I had them in the deck for a while and they played great for me, but ultimately I took them out for more powerful effects. I still suggest these cards. If you're in a control meta, Burning Inquiry can be very good. And if you're in a creature heavy meta, Firestorm can be very good. But if you're going in blind, maybe neither of them at first. Thank you for watching. I know this video is not quite like our normal videos, not a CDH gameplay video. Instead, we're on my bed talking about Brawlin and Shabazz, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Feel free to let me know in the comments if all of my choices are wrong, your version of Brawlin and Shabraz is better, it probably is. And also, don't forget to check out other resources on this deck. There are many other deck builders in the CDH decklist database that have been working on this, and many in the Discord as well. I appreciate you sticking with me as we talk about one of my favorite commanders in the CDH format right now, Brawlin and Shabraz Curiosity Combo. See you later. Oh god, I'm even doing the finger guns without cam now. Shit!